Yeah. Folk podcast. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. No worries. Um, yeah, let's just hop right into it. And why don't you uh, tell me a bit about yourself, where you're from, all the basic information. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Joshua Hugger from The Sign, uh, which doesn't really work in an audio-based uh, platform. So I just pointed at a sign with my name on it <laughs> and no one else can see that. Some uh, will, yeah, some will. <laughs> Some will. My name is Josh Puggett. I am from Adelaide, South Australia. Um, I'm a full-time wedding photographer and videographer. We have multiple teams in Adelaide. Uh, we shoot probably too many weddings. Um, <laughs> and yeah, came up. I'm 31 now, as of not not long ago. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice. Um, how did you get started in photography? So I started in high school and I picked photography as an easy pass because <laughs> I didn't like any other class. I didn't, I wasn't a science guy. I wasn't good at maths, didn't really like English, didn't really want to be at school at all, just didn't <laughs> like it. Uh, so then photography was an easy pass for me because I was like, that's sick. I can just go take some pictures done easy uh and I really enjoyed it and then so I kind of just continued taking photos sort of didn't really put too much thought into it uh and then so I went a completely different route than what I'm in now when I went more like abandoned buildings and mm. derelict houses and that sort of thing so I would go through with my friends and we would film little 15 to 20 minute documentaries on all these little houses around Adelaide. Uh, and then I would take photos of them. Really enjoyed that. Then also realized that there's, there's no money in, in photos of abandoned buildings. Uh, <laughs> they're not spending money on the house. They're definitely not going to pay us any money to do it. Uh, so kind of had to find a way to get paid to take photos, but was also really happy in my day job. So I, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Uh, and then did what every other wedding photographer in the world does and starts shooting events and then realizes that events are boring and then goes into wanting to actually get paid and then they shoot weddings and then there you are. A, a nice little progression. <laughs> it's just the same progression. Everybody does the same thing. They're like, I like taking photos. I want to get paid. Oh, I need to become an event photographer. And that way I'll just <laughs> take photos of like 21st or I'll become a family photographer this is a lot of work for not a lot of money. I'm going to become a wedding photographer <laughs> where you get paid more money, but you also have to be clinically insane. It's a really <laughs> long process, uh, but everybody goes through the same thing. That's kind of funny. Um, was there a job that you did before photography? You said you had a day job. So what did that look like before you kind of got into photography? So I spent 11 years working in aged care before I mm. came across to photography uh, and I credit a lot of what I am and what I do now to that. So I started in aged care at 16 is my first job there uh, and that was washing dishes and just like cleaning up and I'd have a cordial run where I had to replace the cordial or the water jugs in everybody's room. Uh, so I would spend time with residents on my way around mm -hmm. and then realize that, hey, I actually quite enjoy doing this. I quite enjoy being with these oldies. Uh, <laughs> so I did. I went in and I was like, hey, boss, I want to spend more time with the old people. How do I do that? And she was like, oh, just, just go here for a day and tell me what you think. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, no worries at all. I'll just go and have a look. Uh, and now we're using like fucking, oops, oops, we're using cranes. I'm going to try so hard not to swear. <laughs> I cannot promise it uh, because I do it all the time. Uh, <laughs> all good. Quite... We were given like a forewarning, so we're ready to like bleep it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Lachlan will give you a bit of a warning. I'm uh, very Australian, like very Australian. Um, yeah, your editor's going to have a riot. <laughs> Uh, so 
Yeah, and they went and they were using cranes and like lifting old people, you know, like practicing and all that. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Little did I know that I'd actually signed up to do a traineeship. Didn't read anything that she put in front of me. And then <laughs> like the next day I was on the floor, like showering people and feeding them their breakfast and doing the whole job. Yeah. Uh, and then many, many years <laughs> changed. Uh, but then I went into like activities. So people would have their showers and stuff and then they'd come into like a big day room, big area. And so there would be a room of about 30 residents there and and just me at the front of the room and I had to entertain them for eight hours. Mm -hmm. uh, so I take a lot of that into our weddings as well so that we're having a lot of fun the whole time so I can kind of go into a room where there is nobody there or nobody that I know and just kind of lean back on what I've been doing for so long which is just entertaining right at a resident level probably yeah. gives like a a good background of like dealing with different personalities as well and like maybe tougher people yeah. <laughs> so my main job when someone would come into the nursing home so it was their first day in a resident you know, residential care facility they've essentially mm -hmm. just been in their eyes abandoned by their family and yeah. they just hate everybody that is looking at them mm -hmm. uh, my job was to be one of the first people to see them and kind of mm -hmm. just bring them on side like hey we're not that bad like yeah. <laughs> nursing homes yeah you've lost some things but like we actually have a lot of fun here and that's our job um, right. So I was that person. So I get to do that now every weekend when I walk into a room and like the mother of the bride's like, why did we pay this guy so much money? It's like, hey, I'm fun. I'm a good guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So you mentioned that you took like classes in high school to learn like photography. Do you feel like um, getting more of those classical lessons helped you as a photographer or hindered you? Because a lot of the times I hear that like, some people like just picked up a camera and started shooting and they like learned as they went. So having the classical lessons, a plus or a negative? <laughs> uh, to be com completely honest, didn't learn that much oh, <laughs> in okay. school. Uh, it taught me the basics, which I think is very important because mm -hmm. um, anybody can pick up a camera and anybody can take photos but the difference between a professional photographer and like uh, just a you know someone else picking up a camera and taking photos is normally it comes right back down to basics which is like making sure your exposure's right out of the gate making sure you're using things like rule of thirds or leading lines and like they're the basic things that I got taught in high school which you can learn online but straight out of the gate you'll learn those things way faster if you've just got like a tiny bit of education mm -hmm. but then after the basics of like this is how you actually use a camera in manual mode and this is the rule of thirds you could after that you just need to be taking photos like yeah that is the basic so we I learned that on film cameras so we did it on film cameras in high school and then we developed the film and and that was the assignment after that, I got nothing. Like I just kind of <laughs> went and took photos and you'd be like, oh, that photo looks better than this photo. Why? Mm. Uh, and then you'd kind of try to, do I have a, I've got ADHD, but I dissect everything as well. So like if there's a problem, I'll try to work backwards to fix it. So I do the same thing with my photos. Like, oh, this is a good photo. Why is this a good photo versus this one? And you kind of just work backwards to like, oh, I took it this way or I said this thing that made them more comfortable or I put them up against this backdrop and it worked better or sort of that way. Uh, I feel like in Australia, we have a thing called TAFE. It's like under university. So you got like mm. uni and it's like, then you've got TAFE, which is, I don't know, just like <laughs> classes that you can kind of learn. Like you learn, you earn certificates, not like you don't earn a uni degree or a college degree or wherever people are listening from anywhere in the world. <laughs> that thing that you spend all of that money on, there's like a cheaper <laughs> version. That's like, it's not as good, but it's like a little bit cheaper. But they have those in photography and like running a photography business. And I think mm. they really, really hinder people because mm. they just learn everything that's outdated and like, yeah yeah okay that's a good piece of yeah. advice because I'm sure like some people are like wondering oh do I like take the lessons and like is it worth my time or not um some are some aren't yeah and the 
biggest thing that people need to learn, whether they're starting a brand new business, whether they're building their current business or whether they're getting into photography for the first time, is that no one mentor or educator or class is going to teach you everything that you need to know. And Mm -hmm. you can't just like, you know, go to TAFE, sit there. Now you're a professional photographer. You need to take like something from this and then Mm. you need to take something from this person. So like when I was first starting, I watched a lot of Taylor Jackson's videos on how to actually run a wedding day. But the way he runs a wedding day is very different to how I run a wedding day. Mm. But I take little bits of his information. And then there's guys like Ben Hartley as well, who's very much of a salesman. So you take a little bit of Ben Hartley's information, take a little bit of Taylor's, take a little bit of Sam Hurd's, add in whatever you find that works for yourself. And you create this perfect concoction of like, this is how my business should run. And Mm -hmm. lots of people get caught in like, oh, I have to do it this way because so-and-so said so. Right. That probably won't work for you. and that's you got to find your own, you, what you like to do on your own. Yeah, and what works for you too. Like I I know it's going to be hard for you to believe, but I can talk a lot. <laughs> um, so I can use that to my advantage. Whereas mm-hmm. like, so if I took, for argument's sake, Taylor Jackson's course and did it step-by-step step exactly what he does, it probably wouldn't work for me because mm-hmm. it doesn't lean into my strengths. My strength right. is talking to people, making people feel comfortable, mm-hmm. whereas Taylor's a lot more introverted and, you know, leans on other things. So yeah. I could do his course word for word, take every single part of it and not have a full-time career, whereas yeah. you could do someone else's and, you know, little bits and bobs from everybody. Yeah. So you had mentioned that you are, you run a team. How big is your team? What does that look like um, as so, uh, no longer being like a solo entrepreneur? Uh, so I got bullied into having more teams. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. I was very happy just being like a one man or like with a second shooter, just shooting like 15 weddings a year, just like hanging out, being a nice guy. And then... COVID happened and then couples just wanted to book regardless. So I would like tell people like, Hey, sorry, like I'm booked that day. Can't work it. And mm-hmm. then most people are like, Oh, that's such a shame. We really wanted to book with you. And I'm like, that's just the way it is. Like I don't, I don't double book weddings. And then I had one couple and they were like, no, you <laughs> have to find someone to shoot our wedding. I was like, nah, like I don't have to and like, no, Josh, we are going through you. You just need to find someone to do it. And I was like, okay, all right. Uh, and then COVID happened and that pushed it back a whole bunch of dates. So people were double booking. Mm. So I just used to the same people again. And like, I would train them a little bit and like make sure they could run weddings the way that I do. And then all of a sudden there were some weekends that we had two weddings on on the same day. And that was like, Ooh, I don't really want to be doing this. Like, mm-hmm. and then, so I'm also a mentor in some of the local photography groups so people just want to learn how to take photos I'm more than happy to bring them to my shoots or bring them to my weddings or bring them to whatever I'm shooting at the time Mm -hmm. um which doesn't happen enough in the industry like everybody's really closed off and doesn't actually help anybody with anything yeah Uh, so people kind of you know those gnat bugs you know those little bugs that fly around from your (laughs) phone I've got like a hundred in this world (laughs) So if you're watching me and my eyes are going in different directions, that's what it is. Um, there's no ghosts in here. It's just gnats. Um, but yeah, people want help. So I bring them on and then I would train them up and they'd come and shoot weddings with me. Uh, and then, yeah, so we were shooting like some weekends, we'd have two weddings on the same day. And I'm like, this is pretty crazy. Uh, and then now we've got like, we're shooting 12 weddings in April next year. We were like three weddings a day on oh, Saturdays. Wow. Uh, so I've got like 20-ish people that work with me, mm-hmm. but everybody that works with me has their own wedding photography business. So I okay. only hire people that are in the industry or getting into the industry. Uh, so we wouldn't all ever be working at the same time. It's more of a contingency like hey, if someone's sick, like I can bring someone in. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I also, what I try to do is give everybody that works with me or for me as much of an opportunity to book their own weddings as possible. 
So I'll hire people about two months out from a wedding day because if you haven't booked a wedding two months before the date, you're probably not going to book something. Uh, so I try to give everybody an equal opportunity so that they can go and book their own stuff. Mm -hmm. If you can't book your own stuff, you can come and work with me. I'll get you paid so that way you can still keep doing your job mm -hmm. um, and we'll send you out to a wedding. And then I do all of the editing myself. Uh, oh, I do wow. all of the photo editing and then I've got a video editor as well and he does all the videos. So you do the photo editing for like all 20, that's a lot of photo editing. Yep. <laughs> that yep. is, we, uh... <laughs> was it all October or something? We took like 70,000 photos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I got to to go through all of them. And that's where you lean on platforms like Aftershoot and mm. all these other little mm -hmm. things that can make your workflow better um yeah. which is what i kind of really really focus on and it's what i tell everybody that works with me there's another bug um <laughs> what i tell everybody that works with me as well was like you just need to find ways to make your job work better for you rather than you working for your business your business needs mm. to work for you so that yeah. you can actually have a life and like come on a podcast also nine o'clock in the morning is I'm, unheard of for wedding photographers. I'm so sorry. It's just because <laughs> of the time difference. I was like, when's a good time to make this work? This, I was like, nine o'clock. Yeah, that's fine. I forgot that this time of the day existed outside of my <laughs> own house. I was driving here and there was all these cars on the road. And I'm like, what are all these people doing outside? Where are they all going? Their jobs. Everybody's going to their job. Forgot that that existed. I'm more of like a, I'll turn up at the studio at 11 o'clock in the morning and then I'm here till like three and then I kind of just mosey on home. Yeah. And I forgot that there's like this whole eight hour work day <laughs> thing nine to five. that happens around it. Yeah, like nine to five. It was all these cars on the road. I'm like, this is taking more than the seven minutes it normally takes me to drive here. What's going on? What are these people doing? Well, jobs. thank you so much for coming in in the early hours of the morning. <laughs> That's right. My daughter woke me up this morning, so I was already awake. It's just more like leaving the house. I forgot. It, also, if I tried to do this at home, there would be a three-year-old <laughs> somewhere here running around. <laughs> she'd be so, probably so into the video. <laughs> yeah, she'd probably be on my lap and talking. <laughs> um. So mentioning that she's three, I like did the math in my head. So did you kind of start transitioning to run other people's, like jo people joining your team right as you were having um, a newborn? So How I went full time just after COVID and just after my daughter was born. Right. So I was in aged care, didn't earn much money, but had a really fun job. Yeah. Then I went into car sales, which... <laughs> was great like I had a really good team of guys around me you earn good money mm -hmm. but it's lots and lots of hours so mm -hmm. you're working from you know I'd leave the house at 7 30 in the morning and I get home at six o'clock at night and I was missing all of the most important parts of Violet growing up like she was just this baby and I wasn't there yeah and I was like well I almost swore again I was like bugger this I'm not I don't want to do this I want to be there I want to be at home with her so that's when I really decided to start like taking my business a bit more seriously. Cause I used to just like shoot a wedding and, you know, you just kind of take the money and you'd have a fun day and then you'd do an engagement shoot or you'd shoot a 21st and just kind of bits and bobs. But it was mm -hmm. when I found out that Violet was going to be born is when I was like, let's start putting in the time. Yeah. Uh, and then COVID happened and I lost all of the bookings. Like I booked mm. 10 weddings or something. I was like, I'm, I'm working my way up. Like I'm, I'm almost going to be a full-time photographer. And then COVID hit and I lost every single booking. Yeah. Uh, so I turned all my ads off. I turned everything off. Uh, and then I started from scratch again. And I was like, let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. start from here. We'll build ourselves all the way up. Uh, and then, yeah, it's kind of been a steamroller from there where we've just like, our first year in business, we did like 20 weddings mm -hmm. and then we've done like 40 weddings. And then last year we did 70 weddings. This year we're doing like 60 something because we had a bit of a lapse. Oh. And then we're on our way to 100. That's yeah. what we're tracking for. That's yeah. the goal is to hit a, is to get 100 weddings in one year. Uh, and then after that, I don't, we'll just come back down and I'll try to be normal again. But So what has it been like? growing your business from a small baby while also having a small baby and balancing all that 
I'm really tired. <laughs> I can time. imagine. <laughs> all of the time. Uh, so I would wake up at seven when my, was she my fiance then? When my partner was asleep mm-hmm. and my baby was asleep. And I would go and work my shift in the car yard and I would work from eight until you know, I get home at six. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would spend half an hour with my daughter before she went to sleep. I would spend like an hour with Bianca before she fell asleep. Mm-hmm. And then I would sit on the couch or sit in my office and work on my business until about one o'clock in the morning. Oh, and I wow. would just work on it and I would do my website. I would do my emails. I would yep. do like, I would watch tutorial videos from people all around the world. Uh, I would do whatever I could. And then when I was on the car yard, if I had a wedding, not a wedding, if I had like a car yard appointment that was like 10, 15, 20 an hour away, mm-hmm. I'd be listening to podcasts or like mm-hmm. listening to audio books the whole way there and mm-hmm. then the whole way back so I could learn more that I could then implement in the wee hours of the morning when everybody else was asleep. Yeah. And I did that for two years, I think. Oh, like wow. Just slept three to four hours a day. Yeah. Worked really hard built I had a different plan than everybody else so lots of people Mm. and lots of gurus will tell you like know your worth and you know like you got to charge this amount of money and you've got to know that you're worth that much and you never discount and blah 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 blah. it's like big ego thing like you're Mm. a wedding photographer you don't work for cheap I had the opposite plan and I said my first two years in business I'm going to work as hard as physically possible and I'm going to build the biggest portfolio because so Adelaide's pretty small Mm. in comparison. Um, We're one of the smaller towns, not town, we're a city, but like it's not Melbourne or Sydney, which everybody knows. It's like, I think we're third. Um, So I was like, I could pretty quickly, there's in Adelaide, everyone's like, Oh, everybody knows everybody in Adelaide. It's one of those places. Yeah. So I was like, great. I can get a pretty big name here pretty quickly. All I have to do is work. Yeah. So I would book as many weddings as physically possible uh, so that I would work really, really hard in the first year. And then the word of mouth and the portfolio and everything will just start like going from there. Working Uh, for you instead of you working for it. Yeah. So I worked stupidly hard the first couple of years which was like the end of last year was the end of the working stupidly hard uh and now everything's sort of starting to pay off for itself yeah. like we're here we have a studio we're shooting many weddings a year we you know are helping other photographers come into the industry because we can get them paid while they're like building their own businesses and they can mm-hmm. come with us and learn how to take photos like Oh, no, wrong way. <laughs> Suck our photos oh, wow. on the wall. Wow. Uh, that's Canada. Wait, no, this is in Canada. <laughs> that was, uh, from that's, the uh, conference. Another that, conference. That was from the conference. That was from awesome. the conference. Um, that is Emerald Lake Lodge. Oh, that's so, you know, amazing. Are you a photographer is... or are you a business person? I'm a business person. So there's a thing in photography called a bucket shot which is mm. like a bucket list, but it's like a photo yes. that you just want to take. That's yeah. my bucket shot. I remember I remember going through the photos of like the competitions that we were doing. And did, was it is it true that you got up like two mornings in a row to try and get that shot or something like that? Uh, like, yes. <clears throat> well, I extended my holiday yeah. by a week so I could get that photo. Yeah, um, I, I remember seeing that and I was like, wow, the, the photo yeah. was gorgeous. And I was like, that so is a commitment. <laughs> that's the nighttime photo. Then there is also a, like a daytime photo that I've got as well. That's yeah. not printed yet. But um, yeah, we were getting up. So me and the other Australians there were getting up at sunrise every single morning. Uh, and of the two weeks that we were in Canada, there was three sunrises. All of the other <laughs> ones were covered in smoke or yeah. cloud or something. Well, Welcome to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the studio looks gorgeous, though. Is that brand new? Is that something that just uh, uh, finished? Re- reasonably new. Like in August, we moved mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Literally just before we came over to Canada. So I just finished it. Um, I don't bring anybody here. <laughs> it's just for me <laughs> to edit in. Uh, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just a cool little spot to get away from home. So like, I grew out of home 
is why yeah. I'm here. Okay. Do you feel elevated having like your own like separate office from your home? Um, kind of. I mm. like it because now I have a, a way to separate church and state. Like I can't mm. work from home. Yeah. All of my storage is here. Mm-hmm. If I didn't have this, I'd just work all mm-hmm. the time. I okay. sit at home on my laptop and I work and mm-hmm. I will work from the moment I get up to the moment I go to sleep. Right. This was kind of a way of me being like, you spend all of this time and you spend all of this effort trying to spend more time with your family. Mm-hmm. But now instead of working from eight till six, I'm working from eight till two o'clock in the morning. Like I would mm-hmm. just work all the time. Yeah. Like I'd sit on my laptop and I'd be working or I'd be like, answering phone calls or doing emails on my phone or like just stupid amounts of work um so I needed to come here but I also grew out of home like Mm -hmm. photographers come in to drop off their footage would just like come into my house and if there's like a three-year-old running around or if she's napping it's kind of hard yeah Uh, we do all of our own prints so I print everything in house Mm. um we make our own little boxes and stuff in house and I was doing all of this in my spare room so like I had a big printer, my computer, my laptop, all of my lights, all of my storage, like just in this tiny, tiny room. Uh, and then I just never ran out of room. I couldn't do anything anymore. Um, so it was time to expand. It was time to expand. And it also like, it does give you that little bit of like notoriety when people are inquiring. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, wow, they actually have a shop. They're yeah. not just some guy operating in this house that's going to run away with my deposit like (laughs) they have a physical location that we can go and see or and I've booked two weddings because of the signs out the front oh wow I was like cool if I can book one they've paid for themselves and now on my second so they're actually making me money now because I've got big pictures that I've taken like Um, all out the side and like a website on it and I booked two just from that so that always is feels amazing I bet so yeah. Um, turning now a little bit to your the photo- uh, your photography style and the photos that you take, how would you self-describe your photography style? Relaxed. Relaxed. Very, very relaxed. Mm-hmm. So every couple, 99% of couples that come and work with us or book us, they don't work with us, we work with them. <laughs> 99% of people that we take photos of have never had a professional photo taken of them and they Mm. will probably never have one taken again. That's our niche where Mm. if you want like magazine style photos that you would see on a billboard or you'd see on the side of a bus or you want, you know, like we're not for you. We're Mm. not those people. We are not run and gun, but like we're just there to have fun. We just, we call ourselves an extension of your bridal party because that's essentially what we are. Mm. Like we'll come in, we'll have a great time. We joke around during all of the photo sessions. Like we throw the groom in the air or like if we get on golf carts, we like hang (laughs) off the side of the golf carts and stuff. And like, you know, we take our big, you know, like wow photos, but Mm -hmm. in between the wow photos, like we're having just fun. Like we'll bring an S we bring an esky of beer to the photo (laughs) session so that we can all drink beer and like take photos and pop champagne and yeah, just have a good time. I hate having my photo taken. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely despise it. Mm -hmm. So I try to implement what I would want to happen but with all of my couples. Like Mm -hmm. I I don't want to have my photo taken. The only way you're going to get a photo of me smiling is if I'm laughing. So that's what we need to do. Like you put on a show um, and we never stand still for too long either, Mm. which I bring some photographers with us and they just like, they're exhausted by the end of the photo shoot because we're essentially running around the Mm. venue. Like we bring the couple, we'll put them somewhere. And then it's like, you need to, we're going now, we're going somewhere else. So they don't have enough time to think about what's actually going wrong yeah yeah okay yeah I like that because I feel like when they look back on the day like it's they're gonna look and see the photos and it's going to be how they imagine themselves like nothing's like posed or anything like that yeah so I feel like 
there's like definitely a big market of people that like photos more like that than the like the editorial ones that you see where you're like oh those are stunning but is that you the, I don't really want to stand there for that long <laughs> yeah. and like just kind of move your hand in a weird spot yeah. like oh your pinky oh, fingers wrong <laughs> yeah nah no time for it yeah um I tell everybody that comes not everybody I try to tell most people in a zoom call like you could have the best photographer in the world that takes mm-hmm. the most stunning, beautiful editorial style photos. But at the end of the day, if they're a dickhead, then you're not going to have a good time. And you'll look back at those photos mm-hmm. and you'll just be like, oh, yeah, like it's a really nice photo. But God, remember how long he kept us out there? Like, yeah. Oh, we were standing there for so long. We're like, oh, God, I got so cold. Whereas if you look at your photos and like maybe they're not picture perfect, mm-hmm. like they're all good photos, but yeah. like if they're not, you know, they might not be picture perfect, but if you're looking at it and you're like ugly laughing, <laughs> like I'll deliver those photos. Yeah. But you'll just look at it and be like, God, I look like an idiot, but we had so much fun. It's the memories that's what we try to get. are just as important as the like beautiful photos. <laughs> yeah. So that's again where I lean into my aged care, where I mm-hmm. spent... Of my 11 years in aged care, I spent eight of them working in memory support, which was Mm -hmm. like dementia care. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was all going through photos and like Mm. or videos or whatever. So if I can try to, that's why we don't really hyper edit our photos either. Like you see lots of people in boho at the moment where people (laughs) just like put stupid orange filters over everything and like the whites are blown out. Like that's not what your wedding day looked like. You look at those photos in 10 years time, you'll be like, what the hell is this? (laughs) I'm doing so good at not swearing. Um, you are. <laughs> I'm being such a good boy. But you look back at those photos and you're like, that's not what the wedding day looked like. I yeah. don't remember that. Yeah. So we don't really hyper edit our photos. Our photo, All of our edits are pretty clean. Mm-hmm. Um, Timeless, I bet. Yeah. Well, that yeah. way you can still print our photos in 20 years time and they're going to look as good as they do now because mm-hmm. they're never going to go out of fashion. There's not this like classic brown thing that's going on at the moment uh they're just like it's just what your window look like yeah perfect um what are five things that you cannot leave the house without when going to a wedding shoot my cameras <laughs> you, you would hope so <laughs> cameras and sd cards are yeah. number one uh what do i bring with me i like to think i'm a i'm a minimalist photographer mm. Um, so we do photo and video for 99% of weddings and I can do all of that in just a a medium camera bag. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to be a, an 85 millimeter shooter, which is like a Mm -hmm. lens. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I've recently switched to a 50 mil. Um, Mm -hmm. can't I bring, I can get away with just a camera. I could just, get away with one camera and one lens and mm. an SD card and I could shoot a whole wedding. I don't really bring all that much. Like I don't really, I tried prism photography, like what Sam does and I have them in my mm. bag, but like I don't really use gimmicks right. that much. Probably couldn't leave the house without a coffee. That yeah. would be one of them. Yeah, my cameras, my SD cards and a coffee. Love it. Uh, or a Red Bull <laughs> if it's hot. Um <laughs> Yeah, I don't really bring that much. Like mm-hmm. most engagement shoots that I go to, it's just one camera, one lens and an SD card. Yeah. And we'll go somewhere. And it's more about interactions and that sort of stuff. But you mm-hmm. know, I'm I'm already there, so I don't need to bring anything. Well, I feel like that leans into your like, oh, my style is relaxed. So I think that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. Like I got a friend that shoots and he like always brings multiple flashes and lights and tripods and, mm-hmm. you know, all of that. And I just like, it's just too much stuff to carry around. Like I don't, <laughs> I carry two cameras, two lenses and a strap that holds them in. And that's mm-hmm. it. I'll do the whole wedding day just like that. Uh, unless I'm doing video, then I need to record audio and that sort of stuff. But apart from that, it's, yeah, I'm very, very light. Yeah. I like it. Keeps you mobile. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I can just kind of move around. And like, if we wanted, if we need to jump in a car and go somewhere, I don't need to be like, oh, sugar, I need to, you know, pack up all my tripods or I need yeah. to, hang on, <laughs> let me grab my lights or I, I need to get my bag because it's got all my extra stuff. And it's like, no, oh, let's go. Let's just get in the car. We can go. Do you think there are things that you do during the wedding day that are specific to you and like the way you run the day? 
Uh, it's well, I do drink with all of my couples, mm. that's fun one. <laughs> which is weird. I said that to in Canada and I was speaking to like Americans and stuff and they were like, oh, no, we don't drink. I'm like, mm, what are you doing? <laughs> it's a long day. How are you getting through? <laughs> what do you mean you don't drink? Um, nah. So, wait, what was the question? I just started talking. Um, oh, what was the question? The question was, is there something that you do running the day that sets you apart that you oh, think yeah. of? Well, I'm just a riot in general <laughs> to be around. Um, but we, I think it's, I really think it would just be our lighthearted, relaxed yeah. nature. Like we could walk into the most stressful environment mm. and I really lean into like all of my people skills and like yeah. just try to make people feel comfortable and like, it's fine. Like whatever, like it's okay. You're going to be okay. Like mm-hmm. we just kind of go with the flow. We don't need like heaps of timelines and like so long as I know where the groom is in the morning (laughs) the rest of the day is just going to kind of happen like if something changes like I'm there I'm just Mm -hmm. a part of the bridal part like I'm right next to you all day Mm -hmm. we just hang out Uh, and then what I try to do every sunset if we're lucky enough to get one is I'll take the couple out for sunset photos and then take the photos and then for the last five minutes of the sunset I grab every couple and I put them somewhere so they can see the sunset. Mm. And then I just say, like, just take this five minutes. Mm-hmm. You've Aww. got six minutes until the sun goes down. Stand here. This is the only six minutes that you're going to get by yourselves all day. Mm-hmm. Just, like, take this five-minute moment. I'm going to stop taking photos. I'm going to go back inside. And I just leave them outside so that's yeah. just the two of them. Mm-hmm. So although my days are pretty chaotic, because I just keep people moving and talking and, and going around. I do try to give them five minutes of just like, just be yourself. Just stand yeah. out here. Husband and wife, you just got married. Take five. I think uh, that's And then a, come back in when you're ready. Yeah, that's a great tip because I think like a lot of the times I hear people leave wed- weddings feeling like that day wasn't about them. It was about everything else going on. Yeah, you don't get married for yourself. You get married <laughs> for your friends and family. Yeah. If you got married for yourself, you'd just elope. <laughs> true um so I think that's a really special moment that I think a lot of other people should definitely implement um, well, we're the only people that get the bride and the groom by themselves all day yeah we're the only like hair and makeup don't get them yeah celebrants don't get them DJs don't get them mm-hmm. we're the only people that are like literally allowed to take the bride and the groom <laughs> away so just like lean into that and give them yeah give them their minutes minute. to be by themselves yeah yeah I think that's that could be really special. What is one of your favorite memories from one of your weddings that you've had? One, I've got, I don't know if I would have favorite memories. I have like mm. fun things that we've done. Like anytime you shoot a wedding on a golf course here, <laughs> they'll give you access to all the golf carts. Oh, so I that, that's a always a riot. A- <laughs> And I shot a wedding with a bunch of like early twenties mm. year old people and they'd been drinking all day Yeah, and we just got on these golf carts and they were just nuts. They'd just <laughs> gone berserk and they were like trying to do jumps and then oh like my gosh. the bridesmaids were doing somersaults down the fairway on the way back to the, um, like the reception and like just kind of like things like that, like they're always fun. And then, mm-hmm. But then, like, you'll see, you'll go somewhere and you'll get a really good sunset. And, like, that's a real standout sunset. Because, you like, I'm a huge sunset guy and just a weather guy in general. Love mm-hmm. a storm. Love a good sunset. Even just to look at it. Uh, and you just, like, you'll just be standing there and the whole sky will go purple. And you're mm. like, how cool is this? Like, yeah. Even if you're not taking photos, you're just like, this is, <laughs> this is cool yeah. to look at. Um, and then I had a wedding bucket shot that I wanted to take which was like of the bride and the groom under an umbrella with all the rain dropping Mm. down and you put Mm -hmm. the flash behind them no it's not on the wall uh I thought it might have been on the wall I managed to get that photo that was like a standout thing we didn't cheat to get it because it was like raining but it wasn't raining enough so I got my friend like my second shooter to use a hose and we Mm. found a hose in the garden and we used water for that so that was like fun because I got that photo and then I got that photo for real just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So it's just like, I don't know, just like different things. There's no like 
one moment I'm like, yeah, this is the one. It's like every wedding has its own little favorite. It's a bit of fun. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to like remember them is like their their one like highlight moment. Yeah. Um, so you were here in Canada for our conference that we held in September, and we were curious um, as to if you thought there was any differences uh, that you heard talking with people, either between just how Canada and Australian weddings uh, just go, and also like the terrain, how it was different shooting in different terrains, uh, Canada versus Australia. Uh, Canadians don't drink enough. <laughs> as a general rule of thumb <laughs> but like just like we really lean in I think there's a there might be maybe it's just me because I'm very relaxed but like they seem to be a little bit more professional mm -hmm. know, like you yeah. are the a professional providing a service mm -hmm. whereas we go into a wedding day like we're just mates let's hang out and yeah. we'll take photos at the same time that could just be my business model but it is a general rule of thumb like they were like, yeah, no, we're like you're more of a professional sort of person that's there and you're kind of more of a fly on the wall. Yeah. Uh, whereas even we're doing like the photo sessions at the conference and that sort of thing, like it kind of took us Aussies to open people up. Like uh... the couple would just be standing there and like me and Stephen would just kind of look at each other and we're like, do we just do we do our job you know like <laughs> we're just like there and whereas me and steve duncan's a little bit quieter but Stephen and i are very similar in the fact that we'll just yell at you until mm. you're doing what you we want and like mm -hmm. tell you to move and do all this sort of stuff whereas everyone was a little bit more stand backy right the couple kind just of do their observe. own thing yeah just a little bit quieter um but then again i think that's just australians in general we're very very loud <laughs> What about um the different terrains, uh, like shooting? Yeah, Canada you were... was ridiculously good. Like, <laughs> there's just a mountain there. Yeah. In here, like, we shoot weddings in, like, vineyards. Yeah. And it's just, like, like you've got that photo. Do I have a vineyard up there? No, I don't because I'm sick of them. Like, <laughs> we don't really get, like, big mountains in the mm -hmm. background. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it seems somewhat easier in Canada because you could just kind of lean on the fact that you've got yeah. a really pretty back, really pretty backdrop you just need to put the couple in it mm. whereas mm -hmm. here if you're just working in a vineyard or like a big open space mm -hmm. you've kind of got to get the couple to do more stuff because you can't just like take an amazing picture mm -hmm. of sticks <laughs> it's you, you shoot a winter wedding in a vineyard in australia it's like just rows and rows of dead sticks oh, no. and that's all you've got to work with like yeah. there's no sunsets the sunsets are like five o'clock at night and there's just dead sticks like, yeah that's it and you've got to create like people regardless of whether they're getting married in winter or summer they still want summer photos mm -hmm. like they want those like wow photos and if you're dealing with no sunset and a bunch of dead sticks, like you've got to kind of come up with something from there. Whereas in Canada, you can kind of just like, here's a mountain, have that in the background. Mm -hmm. Here are the big trees that everybody really likes, like stand in between the trees. Um, it would be far nicer, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, we do, we do have like vineyard and fields too. You were in a very nice area. Yeah, I went, yeah, I went to the <laughs> nicest part. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the, the spot <laughs> yeah it was good in yeah. the spot it would be very easy <laughs> yeah um when you think back on the career you've had as a photographer is there a moment where you felt like okay I am a professor professional photographer now is there like one moment that sticks out to you I still don't think I'm a professional mm. photographer because I'm mm. not very professional mm, like at that's, all yeah I'll like I go to every wedding in jeans and a t-shirt mm -hmm. and that's it. Like it's yeah. got my own name on it, which is kind of cool, but like <laughs> that is very it's cool. just jeans and a t-shirt. And even when people call me the professional when I'm there, I'm like, I don't really know if I am. It's just right. kind of like every time I take a step forward, mm -hmm. I look back and I'm like, oh, wow, we've come so far. And then mm -hmm. like, another six months, 12 months happens and you look back and you're like, oh, whoa, whoa, what the heck? We're like, when did this happen? Because you know, I just, I try to take every day as a new day and I 
and I take every booking as if it's my first booking. So we book 70 odd weddings a year or whatever. And, but every single zoom call, I'm just stoked to be on that zoom call. Like, yeah. These people are considering having me or even crazier, having someone that I think can go and take their wedding photos. Like that's yeah. just ridiculous. <laughs> but these people are trusting their most important day of their lives mm -hmm. on like me and my team. So mm -hmm. any like Zoom call, any email that I get, I'm just like, this is wild. This is yeah. just ridiculous. Like yeah. these people are going to have us there. That's so cool. Um, and it, it doesn't really help that I've got really bad imposter syndrome. Like mm. I'll deliver a gallery and be like, this is the best gallery I've ever delivered. And I'll hit send and I'm like, no, that is the worst gallery we've ever delivered. We need to re-edit the entire thing. Right. Um, I hate all of my photos like six weeks after I've taken them. And I'm like, I could have done this heaps better. We could have done this better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Even like photos, I take it, I deliver it. The couple goes like, wow, this mm -hmm. is fantastic. This is the best photo we've ever had taken of us. And at the time I'm like, yeah, this is great. We've made, taken a really good photo. Then I get home and my brain just dissects every single section of it. Like, yeah, that's wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Do this better. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it does make you always try to get better every time you're doing it, but mm -hmm. like, you never really get to stop and smell the roses and be like, hey, mm -hmm. look at everything that we've achieved because you're just like, no, we need to do more. Like, why haven't we hit 100 weddings yet? Right. What have I done wrong that I haven't booked 100 weddings? Like, what am I doing so what do you do when you start feeling those like feelings of imposter syndrome? Is there a way you frame it in your brain where you can, you're like, okay, I, I'm maybe not happy with this, but like, do you do anything like that? Or how do you kind of move <clears throat> past feeling the imposter syndrome? Dig your heels in and just like keep going. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. I kind of lean into my imposter syndrome and mm. try to get better with every single thing that I do right even if it's like a slight change like mm. we shot this at 100 ISO we should have been at 150 mm. great we'll change it so um, using it as fuel almost maybe yeah it's okay. uh probably not the healthiest <laughs> fuel to be doing but it's uh I use it every single day like I don't like these photos what can I do to take them better or you're like looking at other people's photos on Instagram and you're like why can't I take that photo? How do I take that photo? Right. And then you reverse engineer how it's taken. Like that rain photo that I wanted to take, I had no idea how to take it. So I had to reverse engineer, like, mm. how do we get to this point that we can take this photo? Right. Um, and I do that with everything that's happening. So if you've got imposter syndrome out there, uh, I'm sorry, but there's no way out of it. <laughs> that's true. I feel like a lot of creative people do struggle with it, though, is what I've been hearing a lot. Um, through talking with different people it yep. seems like it seems like it's very hard to move past like uh almost just feeling cemented in your worth as someone who just is producing something that's creative yeah. it's hard because we see like the couples love the photos and you'll get reviews that are like mm -hmm. these are the best photos I've ever been taken of me ever and yeah. then they post the photos and you're like oh that one like uh, I had a couple and I hated the photo absolutely hated the photo but it was in the gallery because it was like part of the, the memory mm -hmm. that they'd had but I was like delivered it that's the one they blew up in their house and it's their favorite photo of their entire engagement session they used it for their wedding invitations they used it for the save the dates and I hate it absolutely yeah. hate it and they're like no that's our favorite photo we've ever had taken I'm like I know nothing I know absolutely nothing <laughs> I cannot be trusted. Yeah. The, your imposter syndrome can't be trusted. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But it also, you know, it'll only ever make you get better. Unless, you know, I've never had it overtake my, my brain. But yeah. if you keep using it as fuel to get better and better and better, then you'll be okay. Was there ever a moment um, where you were really struggling with running your photography business and you really just wanted to quit and, and throw in the towel. I did that, uh, before COVID. So mm. before I was having Viola, I had a photography business before. Yeah. I was shooting a gay engagements, birthdays, everything. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then I completely threw in the towel, deleted all social media, deleted Instagram, oh, wow. deleted my business, like was gone, went completely off grid. Uh, and I was off grid for like a year and just did nothing. And it was a dark moment in my life. Mm. But when I came back, I had to start fresh. I had to start right. all over again. Uh, so, yeah, I have done that. And what was, was the good. what was the fire that uh, like reignited you wanting to start it back up again? I hate working for other people. Mm. I work really, really hard. Like I'm a really hard worker mm -hmm. and it, I'm trying to say it without swearing, but <laughs> it really annoyed me that I was working my ass off and other people were profiting and benefiting mm. from it. Yeah. I was like, I would work really hard in the nursing home and I got, I would get the same pay regardless. Yeah. Car sales was a little bit different because the harder you work, the more money you earn. Mm -hmm. But I was still earning them way more money than I was earning myself. Like, yeah that was just a little bit ridiculous. So I was like, no, nah, I'm done. Like, I know I can do this. Uh, and it helps that I've come from more of like a business background than a photography background. Like, yeah, I've done photography for a long time, but I've also done business for quite a bit longer and like yeah. a lot more hours into it. Um, so I came into it as like, I'm a business guy that likes taking photos rather than a guy that likes taking photos that has to learn how to run a business. Um so I was able to put everything that I've kind of learned over the years of like online marketing and drop shipping and, you know, all of these little things, put it all mm -hmm. together and just create this firestorm that is now <laughs> private media. So uh, where do you want to take your business next? What are the next steps looking like for you? Next step is 100 weddings a year. Yeah. Uh, and that's big weddings. That's main weddings. We did just launch yes, day before yesterday, two days ago. Uh, I launched another little business called Adelaide Elopements. So we're uh, just focusing on elopements here in Adelaide. So like yeah. Sunday through Friday, I've got celebrants that I work with. I've got like florists that are going to do discounts. I've got me that's photo and video. We'll meet down at the beach. You pay a small amount of money and we'll get you married. We'll get your photos mm -hmm. taken. And that way, as we head further into like a recession and kind of money is a little bit harder now, yeah. you kind of need to pivot your business. Like people aren't going to spend $7,000 on wedding photography yes. anymore. You need to be ahead of that curve. So yeah. you now we're leaning into like elopements and that sort of stuff just in case this sort of happens. Um, but it also means that we can shoot like weddings that was a quotation for people listening, uh, <laughs> like during the week. Like, so we can yeah. shoot them on a Wednesday at sunset. Mm -hmm. We can just do a little elopement with 10 people uh, and still get paid. And then yeah. go that way. I've thought about like real estate photography and stuff, but there's like heaps of work in that. Can't be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is cute. I'm excited to watch that uh, grow a little bit and see where it got to you. Um, so our last question here is if you could give a piece of advice to yourself when you were just starting out, what would that advice be? Oh, <laughs> I think it would just be to tell myself that what I'm doing is going to work. Like, mm. like everything's kind of, my plan has kind of worked exactly as I wanted it to go. Like, right. Everything that I wanted to do has happened exactly how I wanted it to happen because I put the work in, like, just go back and be like, hey, I know it's one o'clock in the morning and you're going to be up in a few hours, but, like, this is actually going to pay off. Like, it's mm -hmm. actually going to be okay rather than, like, why am I wasting, you know, am I wasting my time doing this? Am I ever going to be able to do this? Like, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Like, just being able to go back and be like, hey, it's going to work. Like just yeah. keep going, just keep actually doing it. Like I don't, I don't need to change anything that I've done. Like lots of people are like, Oh, I'd go back and tell myself to like do this. Like no, everything I, I knew that I would wanted to do is kind of happening that way. Like work really, really hard that first couple of years mm. work for pennies. Like I was shooting weddings for like 500 bucks. I'd shoot them for like a carton of beer I did like engagement shoots for a carton of beer and I was yeah. like but it's content it adds to the portfolio mm -hmm. and it gets your name out there like yeah 
do these little things. So when I first, first, first started my business, I had zero money for marketing. I had zero money for studios, camera equipment. I started on a camera that I got gifted that had a kit lens. I had zero money for marketing. I had nothing. And I sat on Instagram and I thought like, how am I going to get my name out there without spending any money? So I messaged every single cafe and every single hairdresser in Adelaide. And I said, hey, I'm going to come and take some photos of you for free. Like Mm -hmm. if you like them, you can use them for social media. If you don't like them, you've lost absolutely nothing. And then so I would go and I messaged every single one until Instagram wouldn't let me send any more messages. (laughs) And I would wait for it. And then I would send more and more messages. And like, I probably sent 500, 600 DMs. And I had like, 15 people get back to me and of those 15 people I got like eight photo shoots Mm -hmm. and I went and did those photo shoots 100% for free I took photos of the people I took photos of their business I took photos of them working I look back at the photos now horrendous they are the (laughs) worst photos I've ever seen uh and the editing sucks but um (laughs) and then I was like if you like them I'd love if you could just say a good word or like Mm -hmm. put some business cards out maybe like yeah if not that's completely fine and I kept doing that. And then from that, I booked my first ever paid shoot, which was a 30th birthday party. And she said, how much do you want me to pay you? And I had no idea. Mm. I'd never been paid to take photos before. So I did it for like 80 bucks <laughs> and went and shot this 30th birthday. And I took that $80 and I spent it on marketing. So I used yeah. photos from that first uh, shoot because like, it was people engaging and like, talking so I used that and I marketed that to people in Adelaide like did a boosted post and from there I was able to book uh like a 21st or something but then the same hairdresser recommended me to somebody else and I got my first engagement shoot and engagement party and then I used that and then I just kept going from that way and then every single dollar that I earned in my business Mm -hmm. I put straight back into the business yeah you just reinvested Uh, it and then just kept going like I'd slowly upgrade my gear I bought secondhand gear forever up until yeah. recently um I was working on cameras that were like brought out 10 years ago but mm. they were a little bit better than the one that I was working on so I'd yeah trade my way up um so yeah I just go back I'd say just just keep doing what you're doing like everything yeah. that you're slowly putting into place is working or will work in the long run um people see my business and be like oh, like he really only started four years ago. Like, yeah. how was it so busy? Because like, mm. there's like 10 years before that of like learning online marketing, yeah. learning how to drop ship products, like learning how to run a Shopify store, learning Facebook ads, learning mm-hmm. how to like go and message people on Instagram or like get a pitch to somebody, learning how to sell things, learning how to interact with people. It's like everything's kind of come together. To lead up here. to what you've created here. Yeah. I love that. So what I got is hustle your ass off and reinvest into your business until it can reinvest in you. (laughs) Yeah. So I didn't take a dollar out of my business until I went full time. Wow. Yeah. Like I never spent anything on myself until I quit my job. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that it sounded like quite a grind that you did for those first yeah. two years, <laughs> but it paid yeah. off. It paid off. It seems like. Yeah, well, that's it. So now everything that we planned, like work really hard, so you get the word of mouth, will then come back, and now we're getting word of mouth referrals. Yeah. So now my marketing spend is going down, but we're still booking more and more weddings because it's all playing off. That's awesome. Well, I'm so excited to continue to like keep updated on your business and hopefully watch you hit a hundred weddings. Yeah, <laughs> um, good, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Josh, do you want to tell people where they can find you if they're interested in uh, looking you up on social media? Yeah. So we're Joshua Huggett Media, H-U-G-G-E-T-T. Um, but on Instagram, it's just I'm Josh Huggett, I for Igloo, M for Mary, Josh. <laughs> J-O-S-H, hug it, H-U-G-G-E-W-T. Uh, and I just bang around on there. Perfect. Um, Facebook, whatever. I'm in the groups. Like if you're in the focal groups or like yeah. Taylor's group, I'm in there quite a bit um, <laughs> just trying to help out. I get people from Taylor's group messaging me 
almost daily asking for marketing advice. So if you do want any help, like with marketing, just kind of send me a a message and I'll give you a hand, help you run a Facebook campaign. Perfect. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We loved having you on. Thank you so much. No worries at all. Thanks for having me. Yeah, perfect. Well, have a great rest of your day. I will. Thank you. I'm going to the doctor now. No. (laughs) Good luck with that. Thanks. (laughs)